Uh, well, not to mention just the hillside was dry because we've had exceptional rain this year, but uh, all of our boxes and beds wow. were oriented completely different. Uh, the bananas were out of control. Uh, I actually brought in a lot of mulch, but you can't tell because it's already been broken down significantly. Um, but uh, we've done a lot in here. And with the lack of irrigation at the very beginning, the garden was a little difficult, a little uh, interesting to keep uh, plants irrigated and uh, keep them alive. So uh, the education behind the garden, uh, we've done several different uh, science and practical learning in the garden. Uh, we had a really nice section on water and the water cycle because water is the most important for life period on this planet. And it's always a reoccurring topic that we went over. So we went over how water is uh, evaporates, condenses, perspires, comes back down on the earth and that cycle is something that's cyclical, it's continuous, it never stops. And uh, it's a really fun day that day because we had a really, really weird fall rains, a really big thunderstorm we had that came during August time, so it's perfect time to talk about the water cycle. Um, we learned about, uh, I taught the kids about plants and their structures from roots to shoots all the way up through. I actually have a little bit of that plan that I gave the kids in the shed which I can grab out in a little bit. We talked about uh, several different components that plants require to live. So water was the big one and that was very reoccurring. And we talked about soil, sun, air, more so oxygen and carbon dioxide. Uh, uh, space as well as companion planting too because some plants don't get along with other plants. Uh, on top of that, just being out in the garden, we've learned a lot about decomposers, which are insects, anything that breaks down something that is no longer living. And the kids had a blast with that one. We, <laughs> when we first came out to the garden, so the garden was a little more rustic. And, uh, we, we did actual uh, counts of the amount of bugs that we had, decomposers and pollinators, at the very beginning of the year. And we didn't have a single worm on in the bananas or in any of the boxes, just because it's so dry here and, and just lack of planting. Uh, we found a lot of uh, cockroaches, just because there's cockroaches mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting watching the kids find centipedes yeah. and scorpions. I didn't know we had scorpions here in the first place, but uh, just seeing them so intrigued for something that's insect. And so we, we elaborated further on that and we talk about how, what's an insect, what's not an insect, what, what classifies that as an insect and not. So we went over body parts of insects and uh, what their particular roles were. If they were a friendly, if they were a pest or a pollen. Um, we did a really, really big section on uh, beekeeping here, or uh, not beekeeping, sorry, uh, pollinators, but mostly honeybees, because I have a certificate of beekeeping from the University of Hawaii. And uh, so we went into great depths, and those kids, they just, that's something they definitely grabbed onto, because there's honeybees all over the place here. Most, Everybody is afraid of bees because they can get stung. And it's just nice educating them on that they don't want to sting you. That's the last possible thing that they want to do. And just going through all their body parts and how they have really specialized, unique features of an insect that all insects have, but pertaining to pollination, honeybees have a very unique ability to do so. And I showed them 
I'm actually gonna grab the diagram real fast. Expand it in. <laughs> Elaborate, and we did a lesson based off of this, where I'd leave the blank lines and I'd talk about them. So what is this part? Fill in the blanks as I went along. So this is just for flowers. So we not only went over roots and root processes, the basic structure of just a typical plant, but we also went into how flowers reproduce and how they make fruits. And it's funny, every garden that I have, everyone talks about apples. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and it just, I, I, have, I always have to establish that we can't grow apples here, and mm -hmm. Lahaina anyways. Yeah. We have some mm -hmm. special situations up in Kula that we can mm -hmm. grow apples, but that's the one thing that the kids all know about is apples. <laughs> and so I, when I'm talking about the flower and they're just like, and we're describing it and they're just like, oh, that's where the apple comes from. I was like, yes, but this is also where mangoes come from as well. <laughs> yeah. So that was, on talking on, about the plant um, structures, uh, we went into pollination. And so on here I have every critiqued body part that a honeybee has. And so going through this was really fun. And we, uh, so honeybees have a pollen press on their back, two legs, that's why they have uh, really special features to collect the pollen because they're statically charged. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they take the pollen and they, this is how I kind of described it to the class, they take the pollen, they comb it off their head and move it to their belly. From their belly, they move it to their arms and on their arms, since their arms are really, really hairy, just like mine. <laughs> they take it and they clean it and move it up to their elbow and they press it. And I had the kids all flex <laughs> oh. get it to get done. <laughs> and then from there, they move it up to their pollen basket. So it was like having a basket on your shoulder. And so after that, they're all looking in the garden. Uh, we have basil all over inside here and they see all the honeybees with the little pollen baskets full with pollen. <laughs> And they were just like, oh, the pollen basket, the pollen basket. Mm -hmm. So they had they had a lot of fun with this one. The biggest thing that they were blown away with, actually two things, was that every honeybee that we saw in the garden was a girl honeybee. And that only girl honeybees do all the work, beehive. And it was really funny watching them. I asked them, I was like, who, who do you think does all the work in the beehive? The boy honeybees or the girl honeybees? And mostly everyone put their hand up for the boy honeybees. And I told them, well, what if I told you that the girl honeybees do everything? <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was really, it was really interesting, very cute. And uh, the next big thing that just blew them away was that honeybees' hearts are attached to their stinger. Yep. And they, they were just... <laughs> and they, they had a real a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. We also had one day just talking about insects. We had one day where we had a prey mantis on that basil bush right there it was actually eating a honeybee. Oh, mm. It was that was a really cool. Yep. You don't really get to see that too often, so they're fascinated with that. Yeah. 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 Um, let's, let's, Wait, we brought the worm bin out. Oh, oh perfect. The worm oh, here we go. So. This is just the, the typical uh, commercial small grade uh, worm bin. But inside here, what we did is I didn't call it a worm factory. It's just not as, I don't know, eye catching the kids. So we called it the Wiggly Hotel. <laughs> and inside here, we have tons of worms. We got worms. Yeah. And with, with these bins, what they do is they have pockets on the bottom that drop it down so there's probably a lot more worms under there. Oh, yeah. 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 They're so happy. So they've they've definitely expanded a lot. Wow. So I brought a yeah. handful. Yeah. 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 And this yeah. is all good for the yeah. They're yeah. dropping out, Jake. They are dropping out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh using your worms. <laughs> but uh every time I come out to garden they always ask to see the worms. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the things they just there's the kids that come in here and just start grabbing the worm straight out. And there's the kids that's like, I want to hold one. And then I bring one and I try to put it. It's like, no, no, I don't want to hold one. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a lot. We, we went over how this is one of the biggest decomposers mm -hmm. that we have in the garden that's the most beneficial. Mm -hmm. And um, 
when we did the count the second time at the end of the year, we actually found, for decomposers, we found a lot more worms. We found a lot of red millipedes and black millipedes. Those are kind of like our largest decomposers in our garden actually mm -hmm. right now. Um, but uh, the kids just love the worms. Any, <laughs> they, they always, when we open it up, when there's always like decomposing fruits and it's got fuzz and all this stuff, they're like, what is that? I'm just like, that's fungus. <laughs> no, you know, they always, they always see the mushrooms in the, the banana bed over here and they're just like oh mushrooms i was like yes that's fungus that's something we don't want to eat we only eat mushrooms from the store okay <laughs> yeah and they, they just love opening that and they just see all the the different kinds of fungus that are growing inside we have like black mold inside here we got uh white cotton candy fungus sometimes there's the red fungus that's growing inside there's all sorts of stuff that's inside here so it's always just it's a mixed bag of education inside here, really easily, yeah. Yeah, and so in our garden, this is all done by the kids. I just, I would, uh, the one stones that are like massive, the, definitely the kids did not touch those, I did those. Um, but all the kids just, they had a blast creating something. And so just guiding them a little bit into where to put the stones made a big difference. Because we have, I mean, in Lahaina, these stones are everywhere. Yeah. We got rocks everywhere, especially yeah. in Lahaina Yeah, yeah rocky Poco. You got ice cream. <laughs> <right there, though. laughs> yeah. But uh, in doing this and finding all these rocks and moving them and bringing them, they broke a handful of rocks and they see the inside of it. And oh, yeah. all the kids are just like, oh, there's gold. There's gold. Oh, there's diamonds in here. And I was like, perfect. Another platform for education. So we went into a little bit of geology. And, and stone structure in Hawaii and how we have a basalt base versus a silica base volcano in Hawaii mm -hmm. and um, how the different temperatures and heating and cooling or if it was exposed to certain things in the air. So there's a lot of kids that uh, will come out to the garden and will find a stone and it has a little bit of yellowing on the outside because there's fungus that eats stones and they're just like, oh, it's gold. And they're like, no, 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 no. That's a blue stone that you got. Watch and break it open, and it's like a gray blue on the inside. And they, they love that. And they're just like, oh, a blue stone. Actually, one of the students on Wednesday said, I got to keep my blue stone. I'm going to bring it home. <laughs> so, I have plenty of blue rock. I can show it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, the one day that uh, there's a handful of kids that were really, really interested, and so I talked to them about fool's gold because we found some fool's gold in our garden. And also olivine, which a lot of our stones here have olivine. But uh, there's a video game out right now. Actually, it's been out for a while. It's called Minecraft, mm -hmm. oh, and it's yeah. <laughs> all the kids know about it. And mm -hmm. so every time a pickaxe comes out or a shovel comes out, it's like, oh, it's Minecraft. <laughs> I'm like, okay, perfect, I'll use it. <laughs> and uh, so we were, we broke a couple of the stones and we got out some small pieces of olivine and the full gold kind of just falls apart but we got some nice little pieces of olivine and they got to take some olivine home and they're very just they're blown away that mm -hmm. inside these rocks there's something that looks somewhat precious mm -hmm. yeah so it, not only was it design mm -hmm. and um, structure for the garden but it also was a geology lesson at the same time well, it's so amazing because everything ties into our second grade standards. So everything he teaches, we continue upstairs, and we actually have certain rocks that we bought from Lakeshore, and we can share yeah. during he, when he's doing that. We go upstairs, and we're like, okay, and then remember what do you have in the garden, and then we look at all the different, you know, there's talc and you know different ones, yeah. and then when I ended up having them, I try to do it every year. Have a they pick a little rock and then they paint it and then they write a story about it oh, where it's cool. from and nice. just a made up story but it's so fun and because they they've been learning about rocks and right. you know and all that anyways yeah. he's, it's so great because everything he does we just tie it into cool. continued learning in the classroom yeah. so it's it's, it's, a, really, it's a really good symbiosis awesome. yeah. Yeah. yeah especially at this school <clears throat> uh, all the classes are very consistent it's mm -hmm. second grade and that's all the classes. At Intermediate, when we get over there, I'll tell you about that one. <laughs> and uh, they come out every week. Yes. yes, and they come out every week, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Every Wednesday. Um, so we can, we can walk through a little bit more. We can talk about what we did in the beds and how we planted them and all sorts of oh, yeah. stuff. Uh, <laughs> so in that picture, 
you saw previously, all the beds were oriented uphill to downhill. Um, I have a degree in um, agriculture as well as a certificate in permaculture. And uh, in the design, I wanted to teach the kids a more adequate way of utilizing what resources they had. And so since the bed was from high to low, whenever water occurred naturally so vain, it would hit the top, hit the bottom, and leak. It wouldn't stay there as long. So all these beds, we switched and oriented them more in line with our sun that we have. Because in summertime, we definitely have sun paths just come straight over the garden, which is great. It's beautiful. During winter time, it goes more uh, south, so it it lessens the amount of sunlight. But before, which majority of the beds were on that side, um, we wouldn't get sun during the winter time on most mm -hmm. of the beds. So we designed them to capture more sunlight and to hold more water. So each one of these have been dug out and put more on a flat surface. So that whenever water does get in it, it sinks through the bed deeply. That way the plants will grow better. Um, so majority of the big irrigation I did, but a lot of this the kids did. Yeah, so they, they had fun gluing these oh, 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 yeah, there's a nest there. Sorry, oh, I totally forgot. The... That thing blended in so perfectly. Oh, oh, look at the I was looking. I was gonna say, are there Franklin? Are there eggs in there? Wow, that was a. Oh wow. That was. That was a Franklin. Did you get that, Kathy? No, I was not expecting that. I didn't even see. I was looking down, like touching it too. Uh, Life in the garden, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in all of our beds, <laughs> you can see that we have as much as I possibly can. I put yeah. straw down. Mm -hmm. And so I teach the kids about, I call that the, the soil sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I explained it to the kids. It's a layer that helps hold water and helps hold um, yeah. uh, the temperature so that plants can grow rapidly. So I told them, well, if you stood out in the sun one day, how would you feel? No sunscreen. <laughs> feel too good. So inside here we've done a lot of uh, different plantings. We have uh, we had actually a really good watermelon production this year. We had about maybe three to four watermelons that came out of that bed over there which are really nice. Um, we had uh, a good couple rows of carrots come out of that bed over there that actually has kale and all in it right now. That also had dill in it which had a, a lab on saving seeds, which is really nice. Yeah. And so they got to save all the seeds from the top of the dill mm -hmm. and clean them up and then put them into a container and we got to replant them. Um, we learned about uh, uh, nu nutrition when there's some bugs in the baby garden, mantis. little baby mantis. And we've done uh, uh, a little, little bit of nutrition in this, in this garden, just because the garden needs to be brought up to life so that we can harvest. Oh, he is cute. Uh, talk about it. Uh, we uh, we made a really, really nice salad one of the days, so that was nice. I could teach the kids how to straight from the garden. Yeah, straight from the garden. Food from the garden is better for you, and how it's how to prepare. How tasty it can be because most young kids they don't want to eat vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, inside here we have several different things. This is. Uh, yeah, this yeah, one. I, I, I'm leaving because most basil plants you want to cut all the flowers out so that you get more of the. That's what I do. I go with the, the basil yeah. portion of it. But this one we leave because pollination is just so important. So it's always good to see tons of bees come down to here. And I mean, like there's a bee right there. I was going to say there was just three or four of them yeah. here. And we They're have so tons, happy. tons that just come down here. Yeah. And um, uh, the we've planted some turmeric. The turmeric's probably getting really close to harvesting. Um, eggplant is definitely 
eggplant for the west side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our eggplant's just... Yeah, a couple of nice ones. Now that we have irrigation, they've all been slowly just blowing up with eggplants and, and flourishing. Um, I try to do as much uh, cultural planting as I can. We have a large so I always try to incorporate something that's useful. Yeah, so we got the lemongrass, uh, eggplant. Eggplant, yeah. Uh, this garden we don't have uh, moringa, but we were growing moringa at the intermediate. I got jicama, so a lot of, yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. Filipinos eat jicama. Um, Basil. We always try to grow something that can be eaten straight from the garden or can be easily added to something to make it into a dish of some sort, just so that the kids can try it and taste it. Uh, the fresh carrots in the garden, the kids love. I, you couldn't grow enough carrots in the school garden. Because every, every day that they came out, there's like, can we harvest carrots? Can we harvest carrots? And we just planted them like two days before. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so this garden is slowly, it's coming back to be a really amazing educational facility. Uh, our composting bin didn't get to as much depth as we'd like to this year just because we did so much else in the rest of the garden. Um, but there's, there's a lot of Uh, we got uh, breadfruit trees donated by a student's mother. This one is donated from. Uh, yeah, Neil gave me this one. I can't remember. Through the botan botanical, botanical garden. Yeah. garden. Yeah. So they donated that one. Um, so we we talked about <laughs> inner planting and things like that. So how this plant right next to it is called the kitchen bee. How that one is beneficial to the plant that it's next to, and that's a plant that we just continuously will cut. And that helps the plant that's next to it. I didn't divulge too much into the scientific principles that go behind that just because it's a little too heavy for second, second. graders. But uh, <laughs> you might be surprised. <laughs> it's it's nice that it's I got enough to where they could understand that it's beneficial. Uh, you can see in between some of these trees, there's little tiny trees. Those are chocolate trees. That's cacao. And so in two years, those will produce uh, cacao. Pods, so that that would be a very fun and awesome oh. lab for the kids is to show how the process of making yeah. chocolate just because everyone loves chocolate oh, yeah. love that. very very <laughs> few kids that don't like chocolate yeah we've talked to we talked to the Makano Aloha people yeah. Yeah. they're starting that they're right next to us yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, said really we've got to get a tour there yes, with the kids sometime yes. uh, well, <laughs> last year uh, with Trisha we brought battery operated oh, yeah. on and off yeah, I remember uh, ball valve and they, after the second time or third time at school, they, they put up um, Camera. cameras. Because a lot of kids will come up here, or families will come here and just sit back inside on and use the basketball courts and stuff like that. And so I decided to, in both gardens, to involve a full irrigation system like they have at the high school. Mm. Just because it makes it much easier to make sure plants are alive. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a solid line hardwired into the main one that comes straight and comes right underneath into the shed so that we don't have any issues anymore. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Each one of those have a, a valve that goes on and off. It's got a filter so that all of our stuff runs great. Mm -hmm. And so that goes on periodically only because we talked about water and how water is so precious. Mm -hmm. And so we utilize it as efficiently as we possibly can. So, so, that, so that that goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nice. and and twice, and that and that on those days that it goes off. So it's morning, and that kind of trains the plants to make sure they stay lower in the soil so they can find the beach water. And I love that you have the crown flower. Yes, now. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So this section here will be developed into uh, the, the large pond or the garden where this will be mostly crown flower and low growing um, flowering plants.
plants. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have a ton of butterflies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this garden is slowly expanding this way since we tie I tied in this irrigation line to over in the pollinator garden. This section um, has a couple Hawaiian native plants, but it is ever expandable, especially with this hillside. There is so yeah, much that, that can be done with this. Yeah, watermelon, strawberry patch. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this garden has definitely developed and changed a lot. And how old is the garden? This garden is three years, three years correct? Yep. Yeah. Three years old. Three years wow. Now? Yeah. wow. Yeah. This is That's great. Well, job. In the transformation mostly in the last year. Yeah. I mean, just We've been transforming you know, kids for three years. Just imagine if there was <laughs> more, kids, exactly. if there was more attention, more time, more right, more garden support here. Well, that's we we can teach in almost any environment, but having a really productive garden is just makes it much. Funner <laughs> and more, yeah, exactly. more for the kids to learn. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's walk over to the intermediate garden because that one's a complete.